Hello students. Today again I am there with you to discuss various aspects of Chaucer's poetry and his personality. It is often said that he was very critical about women, contemporary women. But we can say that uh, this, was a gen this was a general attitude towards women in those days. And before talking about Chaucer in particular, I would like to talk about Chaucer's age in particular, general, while discussing, talking about his attitude to women. The condition of women in England was deplorable when he was born. They were supposed to have been created only to satisfy the lust of man. For the rest, they were no better than slaves. Chaucer was not carried away by the prejudices of his age. He saw that there was there were very good women around him and uh, there were also lustful uh, pleasure seekers. There was infinite variety of men as well as women. How then could all women be condemned and deplored? He objectively, Chaucer objectively presented women of all types as was required uh, in the stories that he narrated in the Canterbury Tales. In medieval times, it was a fashion to satirize women and impute all faults on them. The church regarded um, women as the source of all evils. Why? Because she was the daughter of Eve, who had brought about the fall of men. You know the story of Adam and Eve of Paradise. We will discuss these things when talking about Milton and his Paradise Lost. But you must be having a you know basic idea about these things. So woman was supposed to be the agent of the devil to tempt man. Chaucer also satirizes women here and there, uh, but not constantly. Even the chivalrous knight says that women all follow the favor of fortune. The wife of Bath says that women are best won by flattery and busy attention. He also courts her fifth husband. She, sorry, she also courts her fifth husband, who said that it is better to live with the with the lion for a foul dragon than with a woman accustomed to chide. Though Chaucer followed this literary fashion in many of his stories, yet it is clear that. Uh, this condemnation did not come from his heart. Now, let's talk about Chaucer's humor. Whenever we talk about Chaucer, we often talk about his humor. He did not have any kind of grudge with any section of society or any particular person. So his humor is genial, light-hearted. Chaucer is the father of English poetry. He is called the first great English humorist also. The, the, the current of uh, good humor flows in all his poetry. He has great variety. It is subtle, it is slight, his humor is spontaneous, his humor is natural, 
sometimes paradoxical and sometimes commonplace. No other writer of his age equals him in this field. He is highly praised for his fantastic humor. In this respect, Chaucer can be compared with Shakespeare and Dickens. Shakespeare also did not have any complaint against anybody. Humor produces laughter and smile. With the help of this literary weapon, the author laughs at someone or um, at something. It is sometimes limited to gentle and sympathetic laughter. Chaucer's humor is based on his deep insight and a deep sympathetic attitude towards everybody in the society. His laughter is never the laughter of hate, never the laughter of contempt. It is because this great poet has no scorn for idiots. He has no strong feeling of distaste for rascals. It is the laughter that springs from the frailties and foibles of mankind. So it is not to be criticized. To err is, is human. He knows it. The prologue to the Canterbury Tales is full of humor. The laughter echoes on all sides and it is the result of the poet's keen observation of everyday life. Sometimes negligible becomes significant for the poet. The insignificant things like the squire's coat, the wife of Bath's hat, the monk's brittle and Reeves' thin legs become very important for the poet. He describes all these things in such a way, in such a way that they evoke much laughter. Chaucer's humor is multi-angled and of wide range. With the help of humor, the poet laughs at all the sections of uh, 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 society, all people, everybody. He spares none. He is never, never perceptive but critical. Sometimes his attack is like the strike of a whip with a good humored laughter. And um, with a good humored laughter, the humorist ridicules the vices of the church. And not only of the church, but of the church men also. In this context, we can quote the following lines that describe the monk's attitude. He f not a that text a pulled hen that saith that hunters ben not holy men. That means he gives a plugged hen to the text which says that hunters are not holy men. Paradox is one of the important features of Chaucer's humor. He offers us laughter and smile. When the poet is ridiculing the weaknesses of the wife of Bath, it seems that he is making her praise. The character of Harry Bailey is paradoxical. 
During the journey, he controls a number of pilgrims. Harry Belly controls a number of pilgrims, but it appears as a, as a lamb before his wife at home. Harry Belly uh, remains like a lamb before a wolf at his home. The description of characters raises irresistible laughter. The physical peculiarities of these characters are humorous. The presentation of their dresses also evokes good laughter. But sometimes Chaucer's humor is categorized as sly humor, clever humor. This humor slyly reveals the weaknesses of certain characters. The best example of this, uh, this, this humor can be found in the character of the prioress. I, will, I would like to uh, quote certain lines from uh, uh, Chaucer where he cleverly uh, makes fun of somebody. When he talks about the prioress, he says, Full will she sung the service divine, and tuned in her nose full samely. Uncaught. Chaucer's humor is full of pathos. It shows no trace of anger, and it has no sign of cruelty. It is always genial. It has a tinge of pity for natural human weaknesses, natural human follies, natural human foibles. He, it produces tears and happiness, tears and smile and misery. In this context, we can compare Chaucer with Dickens. Thus, Geoffrey Chaucer is rightly called the first great humorist. His faith in humanism and his faith in realism makes his humor remarkable and powerful. It effectively serves the poet's purpose. In short, Chaucer's humor is praiseworthy. He is never uh, full of contempt. He is never angry. He is never indignant while writing about somebody. He is full of humor. He reveals the follies of humankind humorously. Thank you for watching this video.